Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. You know, we spent the majority of our spring covering that historic FCS spring season. And it was during that time that we realized a few things. Uh, first off, it was just how great FCS football is. How great FCS is. You know, every year it feels like the FBS kind of overshadows the FCS. You know, the FBS beats up on these FCS teams, even though we just witnessed a few FCS upsets last night. Saw Eastern Washington take down UNLV. Saw UC Davis take down Tulsa. But the FBS gets the majority of the attention. But we realize how great the FCS is, how fun it is, how different it is from the FBS. We realize also how great of an FCS following we have right here at the Gridiron Experts. So many people out there that support these teams, these players, and these coaches, the players, the teams, and the coaches that deserve tons of attention and tons of credit, but obviously they do not get that in a normal season like we're dealing with right now. So after all of that, we decided, hey, you know what? We still want to cover FCS football. We still want to talk on it. So yes, our main focus will always be FBS. That's going to be our primary focus here. But every week, we will have an FCS game of the week. Every week, we will have our top FCS game that we will break down for you. And then, of course, we'll have extensive playoff coverage when that time rolls around as well. So today, our FCS game of the week for Saturday. There were a few games last night on Thursday. But for Saturday, we've got Albany. The Great Danes going to the Fargo Dome to take on the fourth-ranked North Dakota State Bison, guys. And this is going to be a fun one. Before we break that down, though, again, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, guys. Again, we're going to have FCS content. We're going to have FBS content, football content, year-round, almost every day, right here at the channel. And we could not be more excited for that. Make sure to check out everything down in the description below as well you know the biggest thing we can't stress enough guys is go sign up for those expert picks we're 2-0 already this week in our week one picks they come out every wednesday we've got college picks we've got nfl picks go sign up for the expert picks you can sign up late if you want you have a year-long subscription but i can promise you you're not going to want to miss out on this season so go sign up for the, that today over on the gridironexpert.com Everything down in that description is for you, and it will help you. It will benefit you. Help us help you, like we've been saying all year long. So again, everything down in the description below. Make sure to go check it out and sign up for them today. So let's take a look at this matchup, guys. Albany, North Dakota State. Like we said, this is going to be a very, very fun game. And we should mention that it is the first ever meeting between the Great Danes and the Bison. So... Obviously historic enough as it is. It's really an intriguing non-conference matchup. You know, the Colonial Athletic for Albany and the Missouri Valley Conference for North Dakota State. A very, very intriguing matchup. Uh, but a game to me that the biggest storyline you have to watch out for is quarterback play. The quarterback battle from Jeff Undercuffler of Albany and Quincy Patterson of North Dakota State. That's going to be the battle you want to watch here. And that's what's going to make this game so intriguing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the offenses. We'll start with the Great Danes, always giving preference to that road team. Uh, like we just mentioned, the Great Danes own one of the best and have one of the best quarterbacks in the FCS in Jeff Undercuffler. This guy has thrown for over 4,600 yards in his career. And in 2019, threw for over 3,500 yards and 41 touchdowns. Led the FCS. 41 touchdowns. Was the runner-up in the FCS Heisman. Their, their definition of the FCS Heisman was the runner-up only behind... North Dakota State's Trey Lance. Pretty good company to be in. Jeff Undercuffler is the real deal. And when you look at Albany, guys, there's not much that we can say on this team based on last year uh, because the Great Danes only played four games. Uh, they went one and three in those four games. But again, everything has to kind of be taken with a grain of salt from 2020, especially from that spring season because uh, COVID just screwed everything up for everybody. There are teams that didn't play. There are teams that maybe played two or three games. Very similar to Albany, only playing four. Uh, there were teams that played over 10 games, like North Dakota State, like the national champions in Sam Houston. So take it with a bit of a grain of salt here. Uh, but when you look at the 2019 stats, I think it's going to be more uh, representative of what Albany will do now in 2021, what they did in 2019. When you look at those stats, they were fantastic. Under Cuffler led an offense that posted 31.4 points per game, led an offense that put up over 387 total yards per game, uh, the offense is electric, they have the big play capability, and it all starts with their quarterback. Now, Undercuffler did get hurt last year, towards the end of last year. He's going to be back, should be back, fully healthy, ready to go. How he responds, though, in a hostile environment in the Fargo Dome is obviously going to be very interesting. But he is one of the best in the country, 
And I think he's out to get that FCS type Heisman now in 2021. When you look at North Dakota State, this is a team that last year was given a bit of a culture shock, a bit of a gut check. It's a team that has compiled one of the greatest, it maybe is one of the greatest dynasties we've ever seen in any sport. Won what, eight of the last 10 or so national championships? The only exception was in 2016 and last year when they fell in the quarterfinals to the eventual national champion in Sam Houston. And a major reason for North Dakota State struggles last year, if you even want to call them that, many teams would be thrilled to get to the quarterfinals. That's how you know you're good, is when you get to the quarterfinals of the playoffs and you go, dang, that was disappointing. That's how you know you're good, and that's how you know your expectations are high. But a major reason for North Dakota State struggles last year was quarterback play. They never found their groove. You know, Trey Lance we knew was going to be very difficult to replace. Uh, and we didn't expect Zam Nolan or Cam Miller or anybody like that to come in there and replicate Trey Lance type numbers. But we didn't think they would be that bad. We didn't think the offense would struggle as bad as they did. But this year, I think things can be a little bit different. The Bison are choosing to start another transfer quarterback in Quincy Patterson, who transferred in from Virginia Tech. And although we didn't see much of him at Virginia Tech, the time that we did, he played relatively well. So he is the new quarterback for the Bison. Cam Miller will be right behind him, a guy who's been in the program. So if Patterson struggles or fails or gets hurt, whatever, Miller will be just fine in that role. But I believe Patterson was the right choice. And he's got plenty of weapons around him. Christian Watson is back. 442 reception yards last year. 896 all-purpose yards last year. He's a dangerous, dangerous player, especially on special teams. They also are bringing bringing back Phoenix Sproles, a guy who did not play last year due to injury. But when he did play, before he got hurt, he was one of the most electric players on the team. If he can return to form, Patterson's going to have plenty of options around him. We know the Bison always have a relatively strong rushing game. The receiver play is going to be key, and they've got that. You look at the defense, look at Albany. Again, this is a team, again, that just played four games. So we're taking it with a grain of salt, and we're going to reference a lot of times the 2019 stats. Uh, Because, again, I don't want to put too much stock into what we saw from the Great Danes in 2020, and neither should you. But last year in 2020, they allowed just 24 points per game. So in four games, they allowed 24 points per game. In 2019, not that different. Only allowed 25.5 points per game and only 213.7 passing yards per game. So Albany had one of the better passing defenses, I would say, in the FCS back in 2019. Uh, Not elite by any means, but allowing just a little over 200 passing yards per game, not a bad mark at all. The problem is they were allowing last year over 150 rushing yards per game. That, to me, is going to be the key. We know North Dakota State last year was a run-first team. We know they're probably going to be that way this year as well. Patterson's going to give that uh, the passing offense a spark they didn't have last year. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep pounding the rock until it doesn't work anymore. Albany's got to make sure they're able to stop the run. And for me, that's the key for the Great Danes. Stop the run, force Quincy Patterson, brand new quarterback, very little playing experience, period. Playing college experience, period. Very little. Force him to win the game through the air. And if they can break into that backfield, if they can pressure Quincy Patterson just a little bit, rattle him early, Great Danes could keep this game close well into the fourth quarter. Maybe even win it. For the Bison on defense, we know last year the defense was their strength. Uh, It had to be because the offense struggled so much. This is a team that was only giving up 19 points per game, a team that was giving up just a little over 300 total yards per game. You know, North Dakota State was trying to win games through their defense. The offense wasn't putting up the numbers, but the defense was setting up their offense to get the points. You know, they were forcing turnovers, they were forcing three and outs, they were giving their offense favorable field position, they were giving them every chance they had. The offense was always able to capitalize off of that. I would expect the defense, once again, to be very strong for the Bison. Very, very strong. Just look again. We just mentioned the numbers. We mentioned the guys coming back. Linebacking core with, uh, linebacking core with James Kayser and uh, James Kayser and his brother will both be the strength of this defense. This is a very strong linebacking core for North Dakota State. Very strong front seven, period. The million dollar question is, can their secondary step up and stop an Albany passing game that, again, is going to dictate this game for the Great Danes? How Jeff Undercuffler plays in this game uh, is going to dictate whether the Great Danes get blown out or whether they're in that game late. That's going to be the key. Can they exploit this North Dakota State defense? That's the million-dollar question here. And we saw last year at times when North Dakota State struggled against the pass, but to me they were a team that somewhat got better as the year went on. They got better as the year went on in stopping the pass. Obviously ran into one of the best passing offenses, if not the best passing offense in Sam Houston in the quarterfinals. They ended up being the difference maker. But again, the Bison battled back in that game, or actually 
led big in that game, uh, and then ultimately fell to the Bearcats, again, the eventual national champions. So a lot going into this one, guys. Again, the quarterback battle is the key for me. And then if you wanted the defensive keys for Albany, it's stopping the North Dakota State run game, and for the Bison, it's stopping the Albany passing attack. That's that, Those are your two keys there. That will determine who wins in the Fargo Dome in the season opener for both teams. I mean, the FCS season, guys, back underway. Back underway for these two programs. And, again, you couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. College football being back, period, I couldn't be happier. But we take a look at the final prediction here, what we think is going to happen on Saturday afternoon. Uh, again, I think it's going to be a great one. I think this is, this is game of the week for a reason. It's not a ranked versus ranked matchup. It's kind of flying under the radar, but this has a chance to be a very special game. And I think this is a game, guys, where you see Albany jump out to an early lead. I think, and I'm not saying big, 7 0, 10 7, 10 3, something like that. But Albany, at one point in time, will be leading in this game. And I think by the end of the first half, it's a one possession game either way. But there is something to be said for this game, first off, being at the Fargo Dome. There's something to be said for this game being at the Fargo Dome. A Fargo Dome that will now be packed with fans. You know, just last night we watched Minnesota and Ohio State and so many other college games, guys, where we got to see fans jam-packed into the stands, something we did not see in 2020. And so many uh, commentators and analysts last night were talking about it, saying how important the fans are to college football. Any sport period, but college football in particular. They play such a huge role. And as we said all offseason long, we believe home field advantage plays a bigger role in 2021 than maybe it ever has in college football history. You're going to see that on display, not just in all the FBS games, but you're going to see it on display Saturday afternoon in the Fargo Dome. I believe North Dakota State's fans show up. It's enough to rattle Jeff Undercuffler. It's enough to rattle Albany. I believe Quincy Patterson settles in in the second half, makes a couple big plays through the air, Albany cracks under the North Dakota State rushing attack. I believe the Bison are relatively balanced in this game. And North Dakota State, the fourth-ranked team in the country, beats Albany behind a big, big second half. They wake up, and they win in the second half, and the Bison will begin their quest of getting back to yet another national championship. They just missed out last year. That's a rarity for this program. The last time they missed out, back in, I believe, in 2016, they won the national championship the very next year. History has a chance to repeat itself, and the road for that to happen starts on Saturday. So guys, your FCS game of the week. We're going to have one a week all season long. We're so happy to continue covering FCS football. We hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. But there you have it. Thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Again, nonstop content coming your way this season. I promise you do not want to miss it. And I promise you do not want to miss out on the offers down in the description below. Go sign up for those expert picks today. Check out the prize picks. Everything down there is for you. Help us help you, but you've got to sign up for those as soon as possible so you can reap the entire benefit. So go check it out down in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.